Good evening and welcome to the first uh, school board meeting of the new school year for 2019-2020. Um, today is Tuesday, September 10th. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before we move on with the agenda, I just want to point out um, something that we will be including now uh, going forward, um, which is a copy of policy BEDH, which explains um, our, the school board's policy on public participation, just so that everybody's on the same page and knows what to expect. Thank you. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? I have one. Um, we just need to add Scott Lab Labby's name to the as the middle school athletic liaison um, under 7D. Scott Labby. I'm sorry, and he, he is what position? He is the middle school athletic liaison. Okay. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Approval of the board minutes from June 11th. May I have a motion? I move we approve the board minutes from June 11th, 2019. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Uh, we have no student representatives here. Um, I'm not sure if they've been chosen yet, Jeff. They have, they, maybe they're in the soccer game, or I, I'm not sure. About. Okay, all right, next time. Um, then comments, um, are there any comments from the public on agenda items? I qualify as public. Not sure, but I, I, I'm Wynn Phillips. I'm the uh, teacher at the high school, and I'm also president of the Cape Elizabeth Education Association. And um, I'm here to just talk uh, about the increase in student enrollment at the high school in particular. Um, and uh, while I think it's great that uh, people are, are coming to the high school, we're excited about that. Um, you know, and people I think are coming for the right reasons, either whether, whether it be uh, moving into the district, um, our reputation I think speaks for itself, or kids returning from private school, um, you know, deciding that that wasn't for them and that they would prefer to be at Cape, I think is another great thing. And so um, there are certainly positive things to a change of enrollment. However, it also um, offers up some challenges. Um, for instance, uh, I have a freshman student um, who didn't receive his iPad right away. And while that's not a big deal, I guess, because he, uh, he eventually did get it, it's one of those things that, um, you know, to be prepared for that kind of influx uh, so, a, so a student feels welcome right away um, because they're already feeling a little uneasy and to not, ha not like if the iPads are handed out and sorry, I don't have one for you right now. Um, can make a kid feel uncomfortable. So we have to, I think we have to really think about those things. Um, the other thing that's big is um, what it's done to class sizes, particularly in the math department. Um, I, you know, I can refer to school board policy 11B about recommended or suggested class size, um, which is from 75 to 90 students. Uh, and speaking with three math teachers today, um, one had 92. That's not a you know that's not a huge leap, but uh, another had 100, and another had 116. And so, um, with the importance of math instruction um, and how, um, of course, it's associated with what our school is measured by, which is SAT scores, when we start to increase class size, um, particularly with students who struggle, um, it can cause. Um, I think it. Can, it's it's an issue that we I don't think we want to um, that we don't want to let fester. So we have to think about um, staffing. I know we lost um, we lost a, la a math teacher last year. I believe it's a three fifths position. I think Jeff could correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, and so um, you know that's put um, put it, put 
more pressure on them um, to, do, to do their job and to do it well. And uh, I know they will do it well, but uh, we have to, I think it's really important that we, we think about those numbers. And uh, of course, you know, 24 students is an extra section and a big section. I don't know, there's 24 to 27 new students. So just something I want you to think about. And also just uh, take a moment to thank this, the uh, facilities staff for um, making the building look so nice. I got new windows and a paint job and the place looks great. So I really appreciate that. So thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. Any other comments from the public? No. Okay, so we will now um, move on to presentations, beginning with uh, Perry, which is right on cue. just look at the first page for now. That's the actual presentation. The packet um, is kind of going to be a segue from what Wynn was talking about. And I just want to share a little bit of the facilities department uh, with you guys. So having said that, by the way, I did plan for a big elaborate production tonight, but I just couldn't, didn't have enough time to, to get it together for you. <laughs> so it's more of just a list. Um, in the painting uh, of the uh, third grade at Pond Cove, we compl completed all the classrooms. They got new cove base around the, the base of the walls and all new paint jobs throughout. The playground is currently under construction. If you haven't seen, I just stopped there before I came here and uh, it's looking great. It is set to have a ribbon cutting ceremony on Saturday the 28th. Um, the middle school, uh, the painting of the seventh grade wing is completed. Construction of two administrative offices, Troy's office being one of them, have been completed with all new baseboard heat. Uh, the roof repairs on the 30s building is completed. That is phase one of the project. I, I want to put a, a second phase to that next year in the capital improvements to really kind of lock in the, uh, I mean, fingers crossed that this takes care of the leak in the sixth grade wings, <laughs> but, but we, we, don't know, we don't know for sure. But we know the second phase will. But we had to do the first phase before we did the second phase, so. Um, let's see here. Installation of an additional sink in the nurse's office. That has been rescheduled for a break just due to the activity now that's in her office. We will tackle that during a vacation or something. Uh, there's a little bit of cutting open a wall and making a mess in her one and only bathroom. So if we did it now, it would pretty much shut her office down. The generator is in progress, moving along slowly. Uh, I did hit a couple hurdles. I've had to appear in front of the planning committee a couple times on it. And we did have to have uh, architect and engineer draw up some prints for it uh, because we're affecting the site plan for the school property. The whole site plan needed to be updated due to the slab being poured. Uh, so we're in that process right now. Uh, I, I've gotten a preliminary approval from the planning committee. Um, we did have to add an additional fence to enclose the generator due to the uh, decibel ratings that are required within the town. The generator, 23 feet from it, about from me to the wall over there, uh, runs at about 73 decibels. It's not real loud but the town requires 45 decibels at the town line. We are 400 feet from the town line, it's close. So the recommendation was to put a fence in just to be sure, and it'll help aesthetically with that being the main entrance into the, for Pond Cove parking and middle school parking. So I, I think it's a win for all. Uh, we did come in under budget on the, on the generator itself, so there should be money aside for the fence that it's, nothing should go over budget on it. Okay, do you feel like that will be in place before winter storms? 
We're hoping. We're hoping. I, I just gave the approval to order the generator. It's 12 weeks for a generator. Um, in that meantime, yes, we're looking to start digging and putting the concrete slab in. And for them to do the work, I mean, the original plan is for them to basically do the changeover over the Thanksgiving break. So, yes, to hopefully get there before. Yes. <laughs> All right, at the high school. Uh, we had the continued win window replacement. Wind's, ro Wind's room was one of the rooms that had received it. And when I say it, it's more than just a window replacement, there was actual physical damage to the walls underneath the windows due to them leaking over the years. Um, so th what we do is we completely remove the wall, the windows get put in, new drywall gets put in and, and insulation if needed. So the, those have been done, I believe in six rooms total at the high school. Uh, interior painting throughout, it was just kind of a, you know, where we saw we needed it the most. Uh, our stairwells still need to be tackled. Um, that might come a little bit later in the school year. I'll see where we finally end up with the capital improvements budget and if there's some money left over. I might do a little more in the uh, stairwells. Uh, new carpet, patching and painting in the teacher's workroom. I don't know if you've if anybody's been in there like within the past year, but it looked pretty bad. <laughs> uh, walls were all banged up uh, from years of tape being torn off and, and the carpet probably should have been replaced about 10 years ago. It, it's all fresh now, it looks great. I think, I think everybody's happy with it. Replacement of old unit ventilators, uh, that is in progress and, and will actually be done as we move into fall, one of, one of the biggest ones that we need, we needed a unit ventilator in is the server room at the high school. Uh, it's an older unit, it has failed us a couple times causing the server room to overheat. Uh, we decided to just push it back a little bit until the colder season, instead of replacing it in the middle of summer when it's 90 degrees out and we have to deal with that. We decided to push it back to fall. So coming up sometime soon, we'll be completing that project before Thanksgiving. Uh, replacement of stage curtains, I'm going to tackle these two together. Replacement of stage curtains and the stage flooring, I'm just waiting for the uh, crew that's handling the auditorium and the stage to pull the trigger on that. Um, they're, they're trying to get what colors they need and sizes and what they're actually looking for for curtains. Once that order's placed, we'll take down the old curtains, redo the floor and then when the new curtains arrive, we'll put them up. So I'm just waiting on, on that crew to pull the trigger. Uh, that's it for the capital improvements work. I did have, uh, uh, Jeff and I did meet with uh, John Deere and there is a new gator ordered that will be coming probably around October sometime. And uh, I have not gotten to the bus radio replacements yet, but that will be coming shortly as well. On to, my, on to my second part of my presentation, the, uh, I just wanted to kind of bring awareness to the, the one town concept and how it affects uh, my department and, and some of the other departments that are involved with it and, and just wanting to shed some light on it. We, we, we get new town council members, we get new board members and I don't know, I, I'm still learning how this is all working. and. Uh, Every, every so often something new comes to light and it, it just kind of sets a spark with me. So I, I, I want to share this information with everybody and then hopefully just get some wheels turning on the subject. Uh, but anyway, uh, since, since the teachers have been back, my staff, uh, and now I'm just specifically talking about the maintenance crew, has received 131 work orders. Uh, so that would be since August 16th. Um, my current staff of maintenance mechanics is four people. This is where I go into the packet. When uh, most people don't realize the amount of workload our department handles, but it is about 47 different structures within the town that I, that I have pictured in here just to bring awareness that those four maintenance people have to handle at any given time. 
Um, so it, it can make both morale <laughs> a little difficult to keep up when, when there's so much work to be done, and, and let alone the, I, I believe the system is failing the buildings a little bit as well, both on town side and school side. Um, so this, is, this packet is just for you guys to look at and to bring awareness of, you know, what it, when I say 47 buildings, you can put a picture to it and see what I'm talking about. Uh, I only have eight school bus drivers right now. We are down one, uh, but we do have four candidates that are interested in the position, do not have their driver's license yet. They, I believe two of them have their CDL license, but they don't have their bus CDL, a class B license. So we're, we're working through that. I, I think we'll have somebody lined up shortly for the position. Uh, 18 custodians. I lost my custodial supervisor. That was our most recent hire over the summer. And al although I think, I think he wanted to part in a way that was a little nicer and, and saying that he just found something uh, a little more appropriate for his lifestyle and, and looking to move up the ladder. Uh, I do believe, and I, and I saw it firsthand, that I, I believe the workload that he had to manage with, with the amount of cleaning that needs to be done throughout three schools and, and five town buildings, that it's a hard balancing act. Um, I don't know the actual number, but over the summer, just within the custodial department, I had uh, it was like right around 140 absences. And a lot of them are from vacation, but, but what it is is during the school year, we're, we're so busy and lacking so much help, it's not convenient for somebody to take time off during the school year, so they push it off. Then when breaks come for holidays, for you know, a week closing, it's not a good time for them to take off because that's kind of when we freshen up the building for everybody to come back after the holiday. So what does everybody do? They wait till day after school ends and my department evacuates. And uh, so to pull off what we do, and I shouldn't say we, what they do in the summer is, uh, it, it's pretty impressive. Um, it comes down to the end. Um, everybody's tense and, and uh, everybody's walking on eggshells the last one or two weeks of the summer, but uh, we make through it and uh, make the best of it. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I've spoken with uh, Noel and just kind of wanted to share his end of the one town concept. And for him, and this goes to back to what Wim was saying with the iPad, you know, for Noel, as part of the one town concept as well, he ranges anywhere from uh, about one of his staff members to every 45 employees. That does not include when we have over 1,500 students come in at, at the beginning of the school year. So yeah, just, just between the school staff and the town staff, he's at one employee for every 45 people. Throw the, uh, Students into the mix and it gets to be a crazy number. Uh, and the other thing is just recently I had to pay a bill to the town that was at a time and a half rate. The town services all town owned vehicles, including our school buses. It's all part of the one town concept. And what happened was it, this was just an, uh, uh, we get a, a safety inspection twice a year. This was the safety inspection at the start of the school year on our 15 buses. B because they're so overwhelmed with the amount of work they have, they ha we have two town mechanics that service over 150 vehicles, uh, 150 driving type vehicles. That does not include weed whackers, leaf blowers, all the other little equipment that they get into. Um, so they are very maxed out because they are maxed out with the amount of work they have that rolls over to a time and a half rate for us that have to pay because they had to stick around to get our school buses ready to roll. So it's, 
again, I, it's just something I want to bring awareness to and maybe start the wheels turning a little bit on, on the one town concept. And I believe it was sometime in the eighties when it was originally drawn up. And I, I just think it's time to look at it again, make sure things are working. I, I've talked with Donna about a few things that, you know, I get concerned with because uh, things that directly go through my department. I just, I just want to be sure that I'm doing things and, and letting everybody know, letting you guys know, letting town council know that <laughs> everything is the way it's supposed to be. But without knowing that, I can't say that. I don't like to work that way. So that's it. Any questions? Did you um, uh, present this similar report last night to town council? I have not. I have no. not. It, plan, it, it's, it'll be coming, report? yes. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, but I, I, I think that would be great. I think it's very informative for both, you know, the town and the schools, um, school board, um, and certainly it's something to bring forward um, at a joint committee. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But, Harry, thank you so much for all thank the work you, you have oh. done. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me first on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> now I can relax. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up are principals in any order. Who wants to go first? Jason? <laughs> Good evening. So I would like to start, um, ironically, by thanking the, the uh, custodial and maintenance staff, um, as I always do at the first board meeting. Our school looks amazing. I was there um, many days in July and August and seeing what they're doing. Um, it's, it's amazing how quickly they work, how quickly, uh, how, how they work together so well, and the students that they hire as well, the high school students, um, do a great job too. So thank you, Perry, and, and your team um, for that. So we've had a really, I, I'm, I'm really happy about this year already. We've had such a great, productive, and I think a smooth start to the school year. Uh, just a few highlights, and I'll, I'll try not to go on too long. Um, just starting off with our August 26th, our first staff meeting all together. Um, what we, we've done each year is we have um, our first staff meeting. We reserve the um, fire station conference room. It's kind of a really nice, nice atmosphere, and it's a nice room. We all get together in there. We had a great um, start, and our theme for the day was um, around growth mindset, which is, it, and we had a lot of discussions around that based on the work of Carol Dweck. And so Dr. Dweck coined the phrases growth mindset and fixed mindset. And I'm sure that some of you are familiar with that. Um, and it's something that we have been talking a lot about as a staff, and I'm seeing t teachers talking a lot to their classes about that. And this is even before this year, but we're really kind of honing in on that. And for those of you that don't, are not familiar with that, the, the fixed mindset would be someone might say, you know, I was just born not being very strong at math, and that's just how it is. But Dr. Dweck's work really proves that that's not so, and that you can practice and work hard, and in your brain can actually, you can actually grow your brain, and you can get smarter and more efficient, and you can become good at lots of different things. And so the idea is to really create an awareness around that, and so that students, if students believe that, then they're more apt to work harder and become more proficient in more areas. And it's really exciting work, um, and that's kind of our theme for the year at Pond Cove as a teacher group. Um, a quick, Perry already mentioned the playground, but I just wanted to just say it's really taking shape. It's very impressive. Um, everyone's excited about the completion of the playground. We have worked hard. I, I wanted to thank the middle school administration, um, Troy and Kyle, and all the school, middle school staff. Um, we are using some of their space for recess until the playground is complete, and they've made some sacrifices for us to make that happen. So. Thank you, Troy. Um, and also, P 
Peaceful Pond Cove, we're continuing to do that. So right from day one, teachers are teaching students expectations in common areas throughout the building. We're already handing out our chain links and building another chain this year around Pond Cove. Um, this year we've gone to all Cape colors though, so we just have the gold and the, the maroon colored chain links only. Um, and the kids seem pretty excited about that. We're already, our chain is getting longer and longer every day. So finally, um, just a little update on emergency response planning. Um, we are, we're, we're feeling like we're in a pretty good place and um, we have a, we've always had a really good relationship with the Cape Fire and Police Department, but now we have a real close working relationship. And I met with um, the police chief, the fire chief, and, and some others um, over the summer, and we had some conversations this week, and we're firming up plans for an all Pond Cove staff um, emergency response training, which will actually be facilitated by police officers and firefighters, that, like, so the experts, they'll be right there alongside us, we're working together. We're actually working with the middle school on this, and so Pond Cove will go first, we'll train our staff first, but middle school's been involved in the planning too, and they're going to do something very similar with their staff after, after we try it out. So that's, that's coming up soon, September 18th, is, a, is an all staff training, so we're excited about that. Um, and one, and just finally, one more thing. I just want to thank Pat Fowler. Um, we've been working, this is the third year, we'll be working very closely with her to, um, we have a systematic approach to teaching all students and teachers bus expectations and safety procedures. And this year, the police department, um, uh, Darren Estes and, and um, David Galvin are joining us and they're going to help with the evacuation drills. So a lot of collaborative work going on. That's it. Thank you. All right, so I feel like I'm copying a little bit of Jason's, but oh well. Uh, so we have 22 new students at the middle school and kind of to echo Wynn's statements, you know, that was not in the plan to have those, all those kids show up. Um, so that takes a lot of scrambling and a lot of work and quite honestly without our school counselors and without Kate and Michelle in the office to make all that happen, um, it's actually really impressive to see how well they do that. So it's working out. We definitely, it has made some class sizes swell that, you know, we were in the 23s and now we're in the 26s. Um, but you can't just say no algebra kids, you know, so we got to place kids where they're at. And that's kind of where we're at right now, trying to work that out. Uh, a couple of exciting things that have happened already. We've kicked off our um, expeditionary learning program. They've already been out um, to the beach and working on, I think, learning how to be, it's, it's not a field trip, it's really field work. And starting to get that message across, it's really been exciting to watch and see how they're doing with that. It's going to be, the first part of the year is going to focus on uh, aquaculture and um, it's interesting to watch. It started out with classroom design and how do we design our classroom? And they brought in an interior designer from the community to help with that process and to listen to their pitches and, and it's just changing how school's happening for them right now. And it seems like it's, it's a pretty good success. Um, another success so far is our parent drop-off loop in the morning. Every year by now, I've received several calls and emails about what a mess that can be. And Mr. Doan's been stationed out there and he is greeting and waving and moving on and trying to help support that, to, that flow to keep going smoothly and it's actually been a pretty big difference. So, uh, and, and Joe's funny, he's like, it's the best way I can start my day. I get to wave to 500 people and see them all and so that's actually working, I think, out quite nicely. Um, to kind of echo Jason, we're working on our emergency planning and you know we're gonna follow up, kind of see how Jason's goes and we're gonna follow that pattern a little bit. Um, we continue to be impressed with the work of our custodians, maintenance and technology staff. Most schools wait with laptops, one-to-one -one laptops, wait two, three weeks to get them out and I think the, the technology department had them all ready to go on the first day and then we have to sign forms and all that stuff but it's pretty impressive within the first week to have those out. Um, I have to highlight the, the position of our school resource officer. Having that position and the person that's in it is just, we're just very fortunate. Um, 
having Dave be a resource for us, which he truly is, more, he's more of a resource than an officer. And, and for him, you know, the kids are starting to know who he is and what his role is, and he can present things in just a slightly different way than me. And we have different roles, and it works out really well. I already had him in there a couple times this year. And being, it allows us to be proactive instead of always reactive. And um, I think it's really started, we're starting to see benefits from that. So that's been a, that's been a great addition for us. Um, another thing that I'm pretty proud of is we have started off the year and on the very first couple teacher days, so it's days where teachers are supposed to have time for their classrooms, they came in and we got all of our, any health related 504 plans done and out of the way in that first, um, in that first day. So a teacher is going to, anybody with a health condition, the teachers already know about it before they get them in their room. Um, so that was a goal that Jill and I had, and it, and it was made for a busy day. But I think it's pretty important, and it's impressive that we were able to pull that off. So uh, I think that that is definitely a big highlight so far. Um, another thing that Jason didn't mention, but working with Pond Cove, we share some teachers. So we share our French teacher, we share GT. And we decided this year, partly because I was able to get a classroom for them in my building, but now the fourth grade students are walking over to the middle school to have French. Instead of the French teacher going to their rooms, she just said it was really hard to, you never really had all the stuff you needed. And I would assume it's helping the Pond Cove staff because they actually have their room to be in. Uh, and the kids are doing the same thing for GT. So I just think it's really impressive that our fourth graders, and I think it's gonna help that transition when they become fifth graders. Um, I positioned that room in the fifth grade hallway so they're not going all through the building. Um, but that, I feel like that's gonna be a big success, be very helpful. And then lastly, one of the highlights for us this year, one of our goals, um, we're working on some professional development embedded within it from our own school and from our, I think it's received best when it comes from our fellow teachers. Uh, so our staff will be broken up into cohorts by their choice. So they're gonna have four choices. One's gonna be executive functioning, one's mindfulness, one's classroom culture, and the other is student-centered instruction. So over the four years, they'll rotate through all of those. Um, but we have three PD Wednesdays that are going to be used to support that, those cohorts and groups and make some group kind of goals. But then the leaders of these groups are going to be working with the teachers individually on more of a kind of uh, private setting. So they'll be pushing into the rooms and actually trying to do some of this work together. So we're pretty excited to think we can provide that to our teachers. And that's really, really kind of largely in part of the PD Wednesdays that are going to allow us to do that. So other than that, I think we're good. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Joy. You can hear some of the same things from me. I apologize. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to negotiate going first. And <laughs> one thing, one thing. Um, but a, a couple of different things. First of all, I wanted to mention a couple people in particular who were instrumental, as I, and I would agree, in terms of the computer staff, the maintenance staff, and the custodial staff. Um, Pat Fowler um, enthusiastically has been working two years in a row and putting together a bus tour of Cape Elizabeth for new staff. Um, and it's been hit two years in a row, and I was really happy with that. And I also wanted to mention um, Roly Moore, who some of you may know because you have some connections to Cape from a while back, and Andy Strout and David Galvin sort of all joined that bus tour. I was unable to go on it this year because uh, I was doing nurse hiring interviews, but Jason joined the group as well. Um, so it was a good group, and the culmination of the tour was David was able to get keys to the uh, Fort Williams Lighthouse, and the uh, new staff were able to go up there and get that view, which is pretty spectacular if you've never done it. So that was very neat. So that's Pat Fowler. Uh, Matthew Young um, also was, he's a technician who works in the shadows um, in a very cold room. Um, and he works incredibly hard and was successful in getting, and that hard work contributed to getting the iPads out to all kids day one, getting new laptops out to all teachers day one, before day one, so a lot of work there. Um, in terms of the facilities department and the work of the custodial and maintenance staff, I would only say this about the high school. There is a particular burden that the, the, the building folks face in connection with the high school, which is that um, traditionally only the, the third floor, the top floor, has been available until after Beach to Beacon. So, and so the Beach to Beacon is the first week in August. 
then preseason starts the third week in August, there's incredibly little time to get a big chunk of the high school done. And they managed to do it every year. Um, one thing that made it a little bit easier this year is working with <laughs> Dell. Um, the special ed staff um, was able to consolidate their ESY program into less space, so um, the custodial maintenance staff were able to have about half the second floor available um, for most of the summer, so that was that was a big help. So we do work together, it's a big challenge, um, and I just want you to know, not in a complaining way, but in a thanks to the maintenance and, and custodial staff so that everybody knows how what a, what a particular challenge at the, at the high school there is. Um, I'll just add a couple of items of context to the student numbers issue. Um, last year when we left, um, we we're going through the budget season, we expected to be down about 25 students. And basically what happened is we ended up the same place we were last year. Um, but as Wynn mentioned, we are down a math teacher um, and there definitely are some high math classes and that is even with cutting the, the staffing of the Achievement Center by math teachers. There is still a staffing by the math teachers four out of the eight periods, but not eight out of the eight periods, which is always our target. So I'm hoping somehow we can get back to lower numbers and with the Achievement Center staffed as well. Um, because my sense is the last two years, the usage of the Achievement Center has turned a corner and is beginning to go impressively up. And a lot of that is due to the work of um, Tom, uh, Joe Wagner, who's the Achievement Center coordinator and other people. So I'll, I'll mention that. Um, it is great that, that families are choosing to come to Cape Elizabeth. So that's the real positive thing. And the other thing I will say that is kind of fun is that there is a slow arc of increasing diversity. We are not Portland by any means, but that arc, which I think is not just the high school, but the other two schools as well, explains why the school district is advertising for an expanded ELL um, position. So, so we're working hard, we're learning a lot, and that's great. Uh, we do have a student activities fair that's next week, tentatively the 19th, where all the different activities come together, and, and the 9th and 10th graders all get an opportunity to meet and see and talk to other students who are passionate about the things that they're involved in um, and begin to get a sense of what they'd like to do. Um, we were successful in hiring a school nurse, which I was very thankful for. We have a temporary school nurse but she is an experienced temporary school nurse until September 27th, and then our permanent hire is joining us from another school um, where she is sort of transitioning out, and she's, she'll be transitioning in her first day at the high school will be the 30th. Um, and I won't steal Kathy's thunder, but I will just say that um, Kathy has spearheaded um, some work that you've already heard about from the other two schools and in of giving teachers more choice and and voice in the professional development activities that they spend in a sustained way over the course of the year. So I think that's very exciting and teachers are quite appreciative of that. So that's the report from the high school. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Good evening. Um, in the world of special education, since the last time we met, um, one of the first things I want to mention is uh, staff retention. Um, the entire staff that we ended the school year with last year uh, returned this year. So it was wonderful that not to have to spend the summer hiring. And uh, if you've been watching the news, um, the rest of the state is not in the same place. There's a lot of holes out there, and particularly in the area of special education with regard to filling positions. Um, but that being said, there is some new faces. So Dr. Kate Holland, our new school psychologist, which you folks approved last spring, has come on board with us. She is uh, district-wide, or considered district-wide, but she has an office at Pond Cove. Thank you, Jason. Um, and Amy Chang, speech pathologist, is our long-term sub at the middle school. And um, I just want to mention that we had extended school year program that was set up at the high school and it went wonderfully. It was from July 8th to August 1st. We, during that time we serviced or served 46 students 
And I want to do a huge uh, shout out and thank you to the staff that worked ESY, our extended school year, as well as transportation and physical plant. And um, as far as the number of students, we're currently servicing 162 students in the district. At Pond Cove, we have 48. At middle school, we have 64. And at the high school, we have 50. We currently have 14 students in referral and two students that are outplaced. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Tom. you. Hi, everyone. So you've already heard a bit about professional development this year, and I did put in front of you um, the calendars for each of the schools, and I apologize that this wasn't in your packet in time for it to be posted, but it wasn't ready. Um, and it is now, and it will eventually be on the website. So um, I want to thank the Pond Cove and Middle School content leaders whom I met with this summer, as well as the principals um, who were instrumental in helping to put this together, and also every high school teacher who met with me last spring and, um, and, and, and gave me their ideas. So that, that was really important in terms of planning this year's PD for the high school. So I'm not going to read this to you. Whew. Um, but I want to highlight a couple of things. So the first four pages are the Pond Cove PD calendar. And I also want to say this is not set in stone. We anticipate that this is going to evolve. Um, but um, but we, we have a lot to look forward to. So um, Pond Cove is organized by content area, you'll see. So ELA, Math, Science, Social Studies, and also there are some school-wide priorities. So you'll see two PD Wednesdays being given over to NWA data analysis and there's goal setting in the fall and then did we meet our goals in the in the spring um, as well as time for peaceful pond cove and responsive classroom and also um, there's one PD Wednesday for writing prompt scoring. Um, you'll also notice that there's a mix of um, internal experts and external experts. Um, so we have the content leaders who are Rosemary Ginn, Melissa Richard, uh, Karen Ferry, Julie Miriam, and Kate Sellers, who are going to be facilitating some of this work. Um, and then we have uh, some outside coaches who've been working with us for a couple of years in literacy and math. And, uh, and I also want to mention on Pond Cove in the middle school that you'll see there's some full days. Those are um, days when we are releasing, half days or days when we're releasing ELA teachers to work with our literacy coaches. Um, and then you'll also notice that we have our allied arts teachers working, K-8, K-12, and on one PD Wednesday, the elementary school allied arts teachers are going to have to work all by themselves um, because of things that are going on for the other teachers in the middle school and high school. But we're very excited about that. So all the health teachers will work together, the PE teachers will work together, the art teachers, the music teachers, et cetera. So we're really looking forward to um, greater attention to vertical alignment and also instructional design. So then the middle school, um, Troy already mentioned the RTI cohorts, and you'll see those on here. And so they're starting September 18th and then December 18th, and then I think they're April Fool's Day. Is the, is the third, but so that will allow for time in between to practice what it is they've been learning. And as Troy mentioned, those, the facilitators are gonna be in teachers' classrooms um, assisting them with that implementation. And, uh, and then we have the rest of the time being given over either to ELA math or science social studies because as you know, most teachers <laughs> at the middle school teach two content areas. And then finally at the high school, um, we had a, uh, a, a fun meeting on August 27th where we looked at the data from last year and then talked through what some different options were based on how we interpreted the data and in the end decided to, they decided to um, divide up the PD Wednesdays into time for departments but not not to do the kind of work that they would do in their common planning time, but rather to say, what do we as a department want to get better at by the end of the year? So they'll set some goals at the beginning of the year and then work toward those. And the other half of the PD Wednesdays will be for professional learning groups. Because for as many teachers who said we need more time in our departments, there were teachers who said, I want to work outside my department. So we're going to have these professional learning groups and they'll be devoted to a, a particular theme. The themes are being generated by the teachers. Um, and then teachers will self-select the group that they want to be part 
part of. And we're going to start on September 18th with some training on what does it mean to be a facilitator of a group or part of a group. And it doesn't matter what the group is, whether it's a professional learning group or a department or part of a faculty or whatever, but just, just to be self-conscious and metacognitive about that. And then, um, and then they will start meeting in their professional learning groups on the Wednesdays that are devoted to those. And the first meeting for both the departments and the professional learning groups, PLGs, will be um, used for, for goal setting. Again, what do we want to get better at? And then we hope to have a celebration at the end of the year. Questions? I, um, I just appreciate we have so many fabulous educators, um, and I think it's so great to just tap into what we have here and, and build on that. So, Agreed. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, we are very fortunate. I'm excited to hear that, um, especially at the high school, the, the direction is coming from the teachers mm -hmm. directly. I think that's so important. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Marcy. Good evening. Nice to see everybody. I'd like to start tonight with describing the school revolving renovation fund that the state uh, announced this summer. And this, the big announcement was that they are accepting applications for improvements to school buildings by September 30th. And this is exciting because this, it's been a while since they've opened this up. And Cape Elizabeth falls in the category of a 30% forgiveness rate for a loan. So for instance, you can get up to a million dollars per project per building. So Cape Elizabeth's percentage would be a 30% forgiveness rate, which would be 300,000 off of a $1 million loan. And it's a 0% interest rate for paying back the remaining funds. So it's again $1 million, up to $1 million per project per building. And it's on your agenda tonight um, as part of your consideration. The deadline is in a few weeks, and our engineering firm is ready, if it's approved, to submit applications, and we will be working with them if everything goes well. And uh, again, it's a 0% interest rate, and the, we will know around November if we would make the, the cut, the ranking for funding. So we would have an idea of where we stood if, if we got approved for a project or high enough to be funded around November. February 1st would be the date for the certification award. And at that time, February 1st, the clock starts ticking. Construction has to be completed by July 20, of 2021, July 21st, 2021. So it's pretty critical with timing, and the engineers know this in the project descriptions. So that's um, all moving forward. Are there any questions about that? Again, it's a 0% interest rate, and it's up to a million dollars. And the payback time frame is 10 years for 500,000 to a million, and it's five years up to 500,000. The other thing that happened this summer was two weeks ago we finalized the summer work with the auditors, RKO firm, and it was a, the last, the final week long work with them and things went well. So we should be hearing from them with our completed financial statements by late fall, hopefully November. I, I looked at the date last year, it was December, so I'm prepared for that. But um, I think things are going smoothly and we have not had any follow-up questions yet and it's been two weeks, so I think that's good. <laughs> we could still get questions, but that's good news. And then finally, in your packet, I have, um, I just, I put together information for you for budget purposes. And I have this visual for you that I thought I could prepare every month for you to be able to see visually where everything stands for the general fund. So for instance, um, and this is broken out by the budget categories, the 11 important budget categories for the budget. So as of the end of the work day on Friday, August 30th, the general fund, and I put a big green arrow at the end of your graph to just draw your eyes to the fact that general fund is at 15% spent at this time. 17% would be the end of August for the 12 month period. So we are coming a little under budget and I'll be watching closely every month to make sure that we are on track for the percentage spent and make sure that there isn't anything unusual happening. 
So this tells you graphically across the board that the 17% is the red bar. I try to save their school colors as much as possible. <laughs> and each category is highlighted in yellow for where it's spent at this point in time, the end of August. So again, at the very end, the green arrow shows you the general fund is at 15% spent overall. And then in your packet, you have all of the details, the numbers, but I thought visually it might be a good thing for you to have, just a summary. And you have the details for the, all of the general fund departments and the special funds. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask tonight or always email me. This is fabulous, thank you. You're welcome. And thank you also, Marcy, for uh, this is wonderful um, and very easy to understand. Um, thank you also for um, giving us information about the school um, redesign yes. um, application fund. And um, uh, I also want to really point out that it was Donna who brought this um, to our attention um, early in the summer, and you jumped right on it to like see what mm -hmm. needs to be done. Um, so the timing is also really perfect because we have yes. Colby on our side anyway, the engineers to be you know, to doing the uh, needs assessment study. So it's all very serendipitous. And thank you, Don. Timely. Thank you, Marcy, for the work and pointing it out and pushing it forward. Yeah. So thank okay. you. Exciting. Yeah. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you. Thank you. So we had some other great news this summer besides the revolving renovation grant. <clears throat> the realtor website niche.com has named Cape Elizabeth High School the number two high school in Maine. Um, the Maine Math and Science Academy uh, is number one. And Cape Elizabeth School District as the number two school district in Maine with Yarmouth as number one. So while we'd love to be number one, um, Number two is a great rating, and you know we're always working for number one. Um, but I think uh, we can be very proud of out of all the school districts and all the high schools in Maine that we're number two. So um, that's great. Uh, the beginning of school did go very smoothly, thanks to the, the the work of all our staff. It was it was quite amazing. I went to the grade nine assembly, um, and. They were sitting there just so quiet and not asking questions, and you could tell they were scared to death, but it was very, they were very cute. And um, they paired up with, they had them paired up with some upperclassmen who took them around, and um, it, was, it was a great experience, I'm sure, for them. I also went to Pond Cove um, when the kindergarten teachers were welcoming the new kindergartners on Friday. And um, the kindergarten teachers, I just want to do a shout out to them. They do such an amazing job. They meet with the, the um, parents and the students individually on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then on um, Thursday, they um, arranged for busing the, the parents. And, and Kim, I think you did that, Kimberly. Um, the, the students <laughs> and the parents rode the bus so that on Friday when they came with all the other kids, they were, I think they were much more comfortable. And uh, the teachers were waiting for for them right outside, and they knew all their names already. It was it was just amazing. So um, they they do such a great job. You do have a list of new staff in your packet, and I included um, some really short bios on all of those staff. So when you get a chance, um, you can uh, read those. We. We have some great new staff. It's, it's amazing when you hear about other districts who are having problems filling their, um, their positions. And we not only filled our positions, but we, we just got amazing quality people. So we are, we are very fortunate. Um, you also do have the enrollment numbers in your packet. Um, this summer we were watching the enrollment really closely at Pond Cove. I think Jason was getting sick of me asking all the time about what are your numbers, what are your numbers, but um, we, um, we are satisfied that the enrollment numbers are well within the district guidelines, so um, I say we're in good shape there. Uh, on August 14th, we did have an, uh, an administrative retreat for district administrators at the Perpudent Club, and the day started with a reflection of our work as a team and wrapped up our study of Peter Senge's book, The Fifth Discipline. So we also worked on the district mission, vision, and values a little bit and um, ended up the day with updates on all the trainings that were uh, happening um, 
when we got people together on the emergency management plan, plans for the tech boot camp, and a discussion on the new staff orientation. So this, the all staff opening days were Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, August 26th to 28th. On Monday and Tuesday, uh, teachers stayed mostly in their um, own buildings. Um, the, there was a, the staff meeting at the high school where they reviewed SAT data, and Kathy worked with um, the reporting out, which you heard about, of the PD interviews that she did. Um, spent a lot of time last, last year, at the end of the year, interviewing staff about their P, uh, PD needs. Um, so um, worked with them, and, and there was a lot of staff voice, so it was really nice to hear that. And they did uh, develop plans for moving forward at the high school. The middle school participated in um, a lot of different trainings, as um, Troy pointed out, and um, they had a representative from Power School there that worked with them. Pond Cove staff spent time with the math, math consultant, Melanie Alcombright, and at one session, teachers in grades four and five worked together, which was great because that really will help bridge the, the gap in math um, as students transition from, from fourth grade to fifth grade. On Wednesday morning, the staff participated in technology boot camps, presented by our technology staff. Uh, we met um, before lunch to learn more about the Maine Benefits Trust Health Initiative. So that was good. People are now aware of all of the initiatives that they can participate in through the, um, through the Anthem program. So that was great. And we had a great lunch um, prepared by the nutrition, service, nutrition services staff. And then uh, CEE, CEEF presented awards to Joyce Nato, Courtney Farrell, and Amanda Morrison for the work in our district. So that was, um, they, gave, they all gave very moving talks about their work. Um, and then we had a training on suicide prevention awareness and child abuse prevention. So it was a packed day. Um, again, uh, our district administrators, school board representatives, and town manager met with Colby Company and Scott Simons Architects uh, to review the revolving renovation grant and projects that would, um, would fit under um, the priorities that were outlined in the grant. So Marcy told you a little bit about it. Um, projects in our schools that would qualify our air quality systems, roofing projects, and possibly some ADA compliance projects. Um, so they are, the, the architects continue to work on the uh, grant application. It is due, as Marcy said, on September 30th. Um, and we are working on our part of the application. So we don't have it to show you tonight because of the time crunch, but um, uh, it will really help us address some of the projects um, that we need to work on that came, came up in the needs assessment. We will be seeking volunteers, um, all you out there in TV land, um, to serve on a district building committee. This committee will review the findings of the facility's needs assessment and determine next steps for the district. So if anyone in the community would like to serve on this committee, they can call my office um, and give me their names or contact a school board member. Our first meeting will be soon after the release of the needs assessment report, which is scheduled for October 18th. So please, if you're interested in that, let us know. We are looking for volunteers um, for that. So. Great, thank you. What's Is going on? Yeah. Donna? Yes. So in looking at the enrollment yes. report, it's hard to see how this influx of new students is really reflected um, other than that you know, it's not. It's it's hard to see it in this report, is what I'm saying. So I guess for the public to hear and to remind everybody that we actually expected anywhere from 20 to 25 fewer students at the high school last year, and and to kind of show up to school this year and have that not be the case, um, and it, it's sort of hard to to see, but. Um, I think somehow we have to figure out how, you know, how do we reflect that reality and, you know, and go forward and have that conversation. It's, I, I guess, forecasting is hard. <laughs> and so... You, you really can't. <laughs> it, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. So um, I guess it's, 
I mean, as Jeff and Troy were speaking, and then as you were speaking, I'm trying to see here, and it does, you know, uh, how, where is it? Where is it? Um, yeah, in reality, total numbers were up one student. Right. So, um, you know, students come, but students also leave. Right. So we have to think about that too. Right. And it, yeah. Right. You, you can't really predict. No. You, you just it's so work. interesting. Anecdotally, there are at least three students in uh, the sophomore class who had, and again, anecdotally, just people that my daughter knows that went somewhere else for school last year and are back this year. Mm -hmm. And that's like, so it's sort of like, you don't ever know. Interesting. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Donna. Mm -hmm. I just give a shout out to the oh. kindergarten. Um, I've, I've had an opportunity to experience <laughs> kindergarten a couple different ways um, with my five kids, and um, and this was it's so nice to have the um, the come in and meet the teacher and take the bus ride and, and the whole thing. So I think um, I think our, our district does a very nice job with that yeah. and the kindergarten teachers. And the kindergarten teachers are very appreciative of the way the schedule works for them as far as getting really getting to know the kids before they get there. So yeah. I think you should I think you should say what your daughter said about the bus about the bus what you shared with me today. <laughs> that was so cute. Oh yes she, yeah, she said the she loves her teachers too, but <laughs> she said the bus was her favorite part because it's like a play date with no parents there. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> I have a question about the, um, the enrollment, and this is kind of a follow-up to Elizabeth's question, which is, um, we, I understand that the, you know, the, the numbers are, it's hard to see for here exactly what's happening in each classroom, and we are hopeful that we're still within our policy on class size, et cetera. And I know the comment earlier from Wynn was, that there's some math sections where or teachers who have a student load of 116, and our policy is 75 to 90. So, to the extent to the extent we're going outside of our policy by a significant amount, is that something we can can we see to see where is that happening? If it's happening, and are we are we making a conscious decision that that's okay? Because what's the point of the policy if we're not sort of looking at it and, and applying it? So. So I, I really just heard about this this afternoon, so I haven't had any time at all to look into mm -hmm. it, but I, I certainly will. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right then, so we're moving on to um, new business, and as uh, Marcy uh, mentioned on our agenda is actually um, item number seven, um, which requires uh, a vote by the school board to approve the school renovation Redesign revolving renovation fund. School revolving renovation fund. May I have a motion, please? I move that we uh, approve the applications for the school revolving renovation fund grant. I second. Okay. Any discussion? I think this is a wonderful opportunity that we need to seize. Yeah. And I was a part of the meeting where this was discussed, and I hope that we will. Um, share that information out at, you know, an opportunity for the entire board. It was, it's, it's exciting. It's a great opportunity. I'd like to just piggyback on that and say it's a gift that we are given this opportunity. So just to agree with you and emphasize it even more. And also to point out um, that it's it's not without a lot of uh, work to apply for this application. So right. mm -hmm. um, not I think I think a lot of schools will probably miss the deadline. Is my guess because it is a lot of work. So I'm, I'm in a very, short amount of time. In a short amount of time. And I'm very grateful to everyone for getting it together um, in time. I'm sure we will. And I guess you mentioned this earlier, but I think it warrants repeating. Um, part of the reason that we are able to do the work and get the applications done on time is because we do have this needs assessment going and the work was already in motion mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. our engineering company, Colby and Company. And so with that support from them, this is going to be possible to get these applications in. So it's super fortuitous, the timing of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and 
that we were, I think Marcy, someone said that these applications are reviewed by architects and engineers, and so if they're not submitted with absolute, you know, great detail Precise. and all specifications and that sort of thing, they're not likely to pass muster. So again, how, how fortuitous for us. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all those in favor? Next, we have item under new business 7B. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the student educational trip for the Cape Elizabeth Model UN to Providence, Rhode Island on November 8th to the 10th, 2019. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Um, item 7C, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve uh, the following 2019-2020 coaching nominations as set out in our agenda under 7C. I'll just the slate, do we feel like we need to read everybody? No. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, may I have a second? I second. Any discussion? Thank you to everybody who's willing to work with our kids. <laughs> yes, and this also looks like a slightly revised format, which I appreciate all the information that's included in that. So thank mm -hmm. you for that as well. Right, definitely, thank you to Yeah, you. please pass that on, Jennifer. great new format. All those in favor? Next item, 7D, may I have a motion please? I move we approve the following 2019-2020 administrative personnel nominations as outlined in our packet, which is quite long. <laughs> so, yep. It's quite long. It's two pages long. May I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Um, I, I would just like to thank these teachers that, uh, and staff members that step up and take on extra responsibility mm -hmm. to make this school, it's, it, it's part of this sort of mentality of going beyond your discipline um, that I think helps us become second in the state, mm -hmm. right? So thank you. All those in favor? Um, let's see. Next item. Um, I think it should be E, by the way. Yeah. I think no, it should be E. No. Just. Not sure. Probably should amend that. Okay. So changing the agenda item um, uh, to 7E. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the following 2019-2020 co-curricular stipends as outlined in our packet under item 7E. May I have a second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. All right. So uh, next we're moving on to uh, any school board agenda requests. Um, announcement of upcoming meetings. Uh, let's see, Nasser's not here for technology. Do, do we know if there's a date set? I don't know. Okay. Uh, policy committee, Hope? Uh, the next meeting is September 24th, and the agenda is still in progress. And you haven't had any meetings over the summer, right? Meeting. Okay. No. Okay. It's 3 o'clock. It will be. Um, and then the school board retreat uh, date has been set for September 24th, which is a Tuesday, same day as our um, workshop mm -hmm. evening, um, from 11.30 to roughly 2.45, it could go to 3. Some people might need to get out a little bit earlier um, for school pickup, but it will be, um, I'm pretty sure, at Perpudic. Yeah. Um, when this was published, it wasn't determined yet, but it's Perpudic. And then, um, any other upcoming meetings that we want to mention? 
Oh, the finance, the joint um, oh, finance right. subcommittee yes. is meeting tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm um, like, what the? Uh, tomorrow, I believe, from tomorrow. 9 to 10.30. Mm -hmm. Or something roughly. Yeah. Um, and again, that is made up of um, our finance chair, Elizabeth, myself, Donna, Marcy, um, Chris Straw, who's the finance chair for the town council, and Jamie Garvin, the chair of town council, and Matt Sturgis. Um, and we are continuing those as we had them last year, which are very helpful mm -hmm. and positive. Susanna, just, uh, can you give, re reiterate the time? Because I have it for tomorrow, but I had it at 10 a.m., so I just want to make sure. It could be. Um, I can tell you, let's see. I have 10 a.m. Okay. 10 to maybe 11, 11.30. Um, any PAS meetings coming up? I haven't received any emails. Uh, we just got one today. I believe it's the 18th. Okay. All right. I'll ask you about that later then. Um, and I think that is it. So uh, next for item 10, may I have a motion? I move we enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 4056E for the purpose of consultation between school unit and its attorney. May I have a second? Second that. Okay. Um, this is not um, anything that's going to follow with a vote, so if you don't want to stay, uh, feel free to leave.
Okay. Hi. We're, we're, <laughs> we're back from executive session. Um, may I have a motion, please? I may we adjourn? Yep. I second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Great. Thank you.